In this lesson, we'll look at how Streamcat responds to stream state events to update a channel state or publish a VOD asset for a previous broadcast. If you recall from lesson 1.4, Streamcat uses an Amazon event bridge rule to listen for various state change events related to our Amazon IVS channels. This event bridge rule triggers an AWS Lambda function, and that function persists and updates database records as necessary. In this lesson, we'll focus on how Streamcat handles the following events, stream start, stream end, recording start, and recording end. Let's look at how Streamcat responds to the various events. If you recall from Lesson 1.4, the Amazon Event Bridge rule that is created for Streamcat listens to the following event types. The event that is passed to our AWS Lambda function that is triggered by this rule varies slightly depending on the specific event that triggered it, but there are several values that are common between the various event types. Here is a sample Stream Start event. And here is a Recording End event. When a stream begins on an Amazon IVS channel, Streamcat updates the channel to set is live to true and inserts a new stream object in the database. Refer to lesson 1 to learn more about Streamcat's schema and the relationship between channel and stream. When the triggering event is either stream start or stream end, we can use the event.detail.event name property to determine the proper value to set is live. Next, we can either insert or update a stream record depending on whether or not one exists for the given stream ID. This method captures the title and category ID of the channel when the broadcast began. When a recording starts, Streamcat either inserts or updates the existing stream to persist the recording started at, the recording path, and the channel's title at the time the recording began to the VOD recording for the given stream. Technically, the stream should already exist since it's created on the stream start event, but sometimes these events fire nearly simultaneously, so it's best to handle the possibility that a stream might not exist yet when the recording start event is handled. When the recording end event fires, Streamcat finalizes the stream record to capture the recording end date, recording duration milliseconds, and recording path. In this lesson, we saw how Streamcat persists stream state change events to the database. These state changes give Streamcat several methods to help users discover content, such as listing currently live channels and searching for a past broadcast. In a future lesson, we'll see how chat messages are also persisted to the database when a stream ends. This concludes Lesson 3. In this lesson, we learned many concepts related to broadcasting low latency live streams with the Amazon IVS Web Broadcast SDK, as well as how Streamcat captures stream state change events. In Lesson 4, we'll start to look at how Streamcat enables broadcasting for real-time live streams.